The Yaucha has its targets set in its sights. This is your look at the new NECA Toys Predator 2 Ultimate Scout Predator. Born on a harsh, isolated island, Scout descends from a rare subspecies on Yaucha Prime. The island is known for breeding unique hunters become specialized in stealth and long-range kills as the means of surviving the dangerous wildlife. Highly trained at using custom-built plasma rifles, Scout is a master at precision as well as an expert in reconnaissance and strategic observation. As part of Greyback's Lost Tribe, he's mainly tasked with terminating secondary targets from a distance to allow the rest of the group to focus on the primary target. At the same time, he continually watches for potential dangers. Long-range weapons are usually considered dishonorable in Yaucha culture. However, since Scout only uses plasma rifles of his own design and build, he's allowed to participate in hunts in this capacity on the condition that he does not kill any primary targets. Serving as both a strategist and protector, Scout is a hunter of rare skill contributing significantly to the Lost Tribe's legendary success in ways that are commonly overlooked. Before we begin the hunt, the first thing we're going to want to do is figure out how tall the Scout Predator stands. I'd like to thank the folks over at NECA Toys that provided the sample of Scout Predator that we're having a look at in this review. And good news, if you're looking to add this one to your Predator collection, the Scout Predator is available right now in retail stores and online as well. Scout Predator stands exactly 8 inches in height, and that translates to centimeters as being a figure that's 20 and a half or 20.5 centimeters tall. Now, I must say I was pleasantly surprised with the vast inventory of accessories that come included with the figure. We're going to go ahead and look at those right now before we get into looking at the Scout Predator himself. The Predator comes with two variations of the combi stick, one more extended out and one retracted. Um, you can see that there is some difference in color between the two. Again, if you like the idea of having a folded up version of the combi stick, he does come included with that. As you can see, some nice detailing done to that. I really like also these little side areas where you can see there's a little bit of silver that's on there. It almost has a bit of an organic look and vibe to it. Really like the design of this one. And of course, if you prefer your combi stick more extended out, then he's got that on the ready as well. Now, in a case of a figure like Scout Predator, for the other things that he comes included with, I'm likely going to be probably moving away from the idea of displaying him with the extended combi stick. The thing about that I like this is that even if you don't use it for this specific figure right here, with each release of these new accessories, the paint is always better than the one that we had gotten before. And while I do have a whole lot of combi sticks in my collection, this one's probably going to find its way in the handle or grip of another one of my Predators I have on display. I do think the paintwork has really been stepped up a game. You can see right there. I really like the shiny look of that black. And the coloring for the rest of the combi stick, as I can best describe, is almost like a silverish copper. Really like the paint job on this. And again, I'm probably not going to be displaying it with the Scout Predator. But rest assured, this will find its place with another Yaucha. Moving those to the side, other things that he's come with that are rather familiar, I'm sure, to uh, Yaucha collectors or Predator collectors, is he does come with variations of the smart disc. And while we have gotten a whole bunch of these, your normal traditional smart discs, we don't get often at times the extended out variety of the smart disc. You can see the difference between the two. Primarily, they're like a dark silver and then been washed with a black over top of it. It really does give it that age and wear look to it. You can see the underside right there. I just love the detailing of this. I don't know when it comes to uh, licensing. I don't know what NECA is able to actually release. But I mean, maybe combi sticks would be a little bit too big for a collection. But if they could recreate a one-to-one -one scale of the smart disc that could actually open up like this, it obviously couldn't be sharp. It would be something that would be almost considered more a weapon. But if they had done it in plastic, they possibly could pull off one that could open and close. Maybe even have light up options on it too. I do think that would be a fun touch. The extended version or the opened up smart disc does fit into his hands, but doesn't fit onto the side, the side located on the on the figure's uh, thigh area here. You can, however, take the more compact variety of that, and that just fits in here. 
Now it does apply a little bit of pressure. I have to apply a little bit of pressure and it does stay in there, but it does, it seems not to stay in there completely perfect. And I don't say it necessarily as a fault to scout, but I notice a lot of times when it comes to these smart disks, yeah, it's in there, but I think if I bang it just ever so slightly, that smart disk is probably gonna fall completely out. I do like, the, again, the fact that they include these. A lot of times when it comes to the smart disks, I may have maybe one Predator on display currently with a smart disc in its hand, but a lot of times I'll usually holster this bad boy on the side of their leg. And providing, again, you're not banging it in any way, you shouldn't have the smart disc falling off too frequently. So there's that. Other things that comes included with the figures. Now, these are smaller things. He comes with the back. Now, I don't know if this is necessarily a medic pack, for example, but you can see it's slotted on the back area here. What you do is you spin the figure around, Right at the back where the plasma caster shoulder mounted cannon is, you'll see that there's this little uh, notch, this bit of plastic that sticks up. You just take that and fit it onto the back like so, and you can display on the back of the figure. This, not this specifically, but this right here will also play a role when we're looking at the rifle. The one thing I did notice on this particular figure is there's the little tapped piece right here that in previous release, Yauchas, this has served as being a clip to hold things like the combi stick. I did notice on mine, it's missing that area. Now, I don't know if they just simply reused this whole mold because it's likely they have used this torso piece and they just have left off the clip. Or if there was a clip on the figure in the first place, mine simply has just fallen off. Uh, if you have picked up this figure, let me know down below in the comments section if that clip is still present on yours or if they've just used the mold and they've just not filled in that little, uh, that little slot that's located on the back here. The next accessory we'll have a look at, and most likely the one you're going to lose if you're not careful, is the Gauntlet Blaster. How this works, I'm going to again pick up the figure here, and I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to re remove the back here because this is not something that stays in place well enough. I feel if I bang this, it's going to find its way onto the floor. But if you look at the side of the gauntlet here, this is the area, of course, that has a little control console. This will be the countdown. As you can see, it looks like he's already set it, but just to the side of it, his neighbor right there. See this piece right here. This now this is a part that take this comes off, and it can be careful that you don't lose this. It's almost identical of a piece. Let me just show you the two. The only difference is you can see the end of the gauntlet has shifted its way forward. The paint's a little bit different too. It's painted a little bit more in the silver. But what you do is you take the little gauntlet and you put right that little slot there. You take the little tab piece and it fits into that groove. If you're not careful and you don't apply enough pressure to it, it's going to find its way popping off and you're going to guarantee to lose it. But if it fits just in place like that, and again, it gives you some variation for how you can display it. There's the original one right there, just a lot more silver. And again, those little blades, this on the side, have shifted its way forward. I do like that touch. I'm probably not going to be displaying the figure with this for the risk that this could break off. Or not break off, but certainly fall off. So I think I'm probably going to just revert back to the original one. When you are putting in place, though, really make sure you apply a good amount of pressure to it because just simply because it's plugged in the way that it is, it could likely fall off on you. It's not technically really an accessory, but he also does have the little control pad there on his gauntlet. It's strange that it actually has the hinge here because I always think of the hinge being more so on this side, but that's, that's the way that they've sculpted the figure. Nice detailing done to that as well. Another thing he comes included with before we get to the larger firepower, he comes with smaller firepower. He comes with a little blast effect that attaches the shoulder mounted cannon or the plasma caster, which you can see right here. It deviates a bit away from the jungle hunter design plasma caster and gets a little closer to the city hunter. Of course, this falling under the Predator 2 designs. So it's a little bit more like, kind of looks a little more insectoid, but this just simply slides along this track. Um, all it is really, let me just take it out, it kind of looks like a little spool of thread. And all it does is really is fits into that, those, that little canal and on the side sort of just braces it as it shifts back and back and forth. It does also allow a little bit of posability and this top piece also hinges around, but I guess we'll talk a little bit more about that when we have a look at the figure's articulation. But nonetheless, you're gonna take the blast effect and this just plugs into the end of the shoulder mounted cannon, just like so. You really do have to apply a fair bit of pressure because um, I don't know if you can see it or not. It's just a very thin slot that just fit it on top. Again, just a little bit of pressure, just enough that it stays in place. If you feel like you don't have it in the right way, 
flip it around, which I actually feel like I've got it flipped the wrong way, but it just fits into place. And just like so, there we go, it stays in place. Again, looks great. It does have the nice coloring de deviation where it goes from like that dark, almost cherry red, and it gets progressively more to the oranges and to the whites as we get to the end of it. You don't get very many of these things when it comes to the releases of these Predator figures. I'd be down the idea of getting more of these, even if they just release like a blast effect pack, maybe throw in a couple of other things in there. I don't know. I just think that would be a fun idea. Um, I only have actually a couple of Predators that have this option. I think actually the strung out skinned victim actually I think came with a couple of those as well. So we have gotten them in the past. This certainly isn't the first and only time that we've gotten this, but uh, it's nice to see that they include that with the figure. Putting the figure down, of course, he comes with a whole series of interchangeable hands. A lot of these will play some significant role when we look at his larger plasma rifle, because again, a lot of these hands do come in play for that. I suppose before we get really into talking about his hands, the thing I really want to spend the time talking about the most is his long-range blaster rifle. By far the coolest of the accessories that come included with Scout Predator. And likely going to be the way I'm going to display the figure as well. That's probably one of the reasonings why I said that combi stick is going to be assigned to a different Predator instead. There is some features to this. You can bring these down, for example, and you can have this resting on a surface if he's targeting a prey from a distance. You can also get that long range fire by bringing this out as well. That's a nice touch on their part. Didn't really su surprise to see that extended out as far as it did. This just pushes back into place. A little paint actually when that when I've done that a couple of times, I've noticed a little bit of paint ends up finding its way onto my hand. Speaking of paint though, the primary color that they've used for all of this is this dark gray, but you can see all the details pop a lot more with the much needed, much appreciated coating of silver paint. It's not everywhere. It's only just a little bit on the back of the handle and mostly it's on the front of the barrel, but it just adds a little bit of extra detailing and a contrast to the otherwise dark gray that they ended up using. There's also a little bit of red there on the end and a little bit of black there as well. Really like the design of this. There is also a variation to that. They do give you a smaller, more compact version of the long range rifle. I do like the, the way that they've designed this. Again, all the same stuff that we looked at, just in a smaller, more compact design. Even like these little side struts don't move down. They're all molded plastic. Uh, you can house this technically on the Scout Predator. Let me just show you what we're going to do. Spin the figure around. And on the back, you'll remember this was the area that had his me medic pack. At least I think that's what this is. This just fit onto his back like so. Not the most secure, granted, yes, but... This just fit on the back. What you're going to do is if you already have this in place, just remove it out. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take the rifle. And there's two ways technically you could do it. I think NECA only had it really designed one way, but I had it at one point facing this way because I noticed that the shape lined up. See this bottom part of the rifle fits perfectly in that little step down on the track, the little piece of uh, plastic that they've got on his torso here. Um, I, the downside, though, I didn't find it was holding in place. I only was able to do this once or twice, and then after that, it just didn't seem to hold in place at all. I think the intended plan by NECA is if you flip it around this way, what you're going to do is you're going to use this this top, top part right here, sort of a ledge. Fit this in place. Now, you may want to even move the Scout Predator's head out of the way because the hair will definitely sort of force against this. But all you're really going to do is you're going to take that clamp, see on the bottom of it, and you fit it against this. And while you're doing this, this top piece is going to just rest on top. And that's more than enough to keep this in place. You can shake it. You can bang it. Don't bang it too much, of course. And it stays perfectly in place. I think this was really the way that NECA planned to have it in the first place. Even though I had flipped it around and it was working fine the other way, I think this is really the best way to display it. And even though I'm going to be displaying the Scout Predator with the rifle in his hand, I might still go ahead and have this displayed on the back of his body. Because I just feel it adds a little bit of extra something, something to his torso. Instead of just having him a really flat back, by adding this, it just adds a little extra appeal to his armor. And I really like the way that that turned out. Yes, yes. So let's go back to his hands. A couple of different variations of his hands. Now, to be fair, I've already gone ahead and taken the liberty of removing these hands. These were the ones that came out of the figure, out of the figure's packaging. You can see how well they've been sculpted. 
there's almost kind of a bit of a glowingness to the plastic that they've used, even though this technically doesn't glow in the dark. I do like the design of these, but these are the hands that were defaulted when you get the figure out of the packaging. I have already popped those out. Oh, oh, one last thing. He also comes with this hand as well. And this hand is great for holding the smart disc, for example. But I'm going to move that all out of the way because I've already had gone ahead and, like I said, I've taken the liberty of already replacing it with these extra hands. And you'll see these ones right now. Kind of a moderately gripped hand, ideally suited for holding the combi stick. And then he's also got this hand as well, which I guess is good for also holding the, uh, the smart disc also as well. But in this case, what we're actually going to want to do is I, the reason why I didn't do this on camera is because I really didn't like fighting the hand against these blades. These are things you're really going to have to be careful of when it comes to replacing the hands, simply because you're going to have to get your hand in there and wiggle this out, and all the while make sure that you're not clipping these or breaking them any way. I don't know if you can hear it or not. Yeah, it's almost like a really thin, thin plastic that they've used for it. Anyways, though, what you're going to do, just spin this hand around like so, making sure the blades are completely out of the way. I'm going to go ahead and take the rifle, and I find it helps just to pry the hand just a little bit. You're going to take, I don't know if you can see it or not, because this is all enclosed, I find if you fit the thumb over first, and then once that's in place, just sort of navigate the other fingers around. Now, this is something I find, honestly, is a lot easier not doing on camera, but I did want to show you guys how I did this. Again, you're just going to feed the hand through. There we go. Just did that. Did it like that. You can see the thumb is on the top. The four fingers are on the bottom. And that's more than enough of a secure grip that the rifle isn't going to be going anywhere. And then from there, just making sure that these blades are out of the way. It's always about the blades. you got to get those out of the way. Then the other thing you can do is because I'm using then this hand, which has sort of that grip shape to it, what you can then do is fit that. A couple of different places you can fit it, but it fits perfectly, perfectly right here. And you can see just how I've got that on the undercarriage of the rifle. You've also got it in such a way that you can have it close enough to the Predator's head. I know I'm not really doing enough of it on camera. There we go. And you can see how he's holding the rifle. Uh, definitely going to be the way I'm going to be displaying this. Just want to make sure I get that back in the hand. There we go. All right. Definitely going to be the way I'm going to be displaying the figure with or without the head, the helmeted head. I'm still not sure if I've decided which way I want to display it yet. But you can see how easy it holds in place. The, only, the real thing that's working behind the scenes is this particular hand right here, and it holds the grip perfect. You just have to sort of get it around those blades. That's your biggest obstacle. With the accessories now finally out of the way, let's get a closer look at the Scout Predator. A real interesting designed Predator, and not overly complicated either with his design. In fact, when you look at it, there's a lot of elements that are shared both between the Jungle Hunter design and the City Hunter design, where you've got a lot of the City Hunter's elements here in its armor plates and, of course, the Plasma Caster, and a really familiar Jungle Hunter design when it comes to his helmet. Now, again, there's variations to this, so if you want to display this guy unhelmeted, they do also include this head portrait as well. You can see probably right off the bat the struggle that I'm going to be facing is which way I would like to display the figure. Normally I generally go, generally for the most part, I usually go with the helmeted versions because I just like the look of the helmeted predator. But I guess there is real some significant argument as to why I would probably want to go with the unhelmeted version just by the really interesting tusks the way that they've sculpted it on the unmasked portrait for Scout Predator. I think what I might ultimately do is display it with this head sculpt and then still make use of this, I might then take this head sculpt and use it maybe for, for example, another jungle hunter that I have in my collection that probably could use a much needed update to the way the helmet is designed because it's really not that much different than your traditional jungle hunter design. Let's go ahead and look at the back here. Of course, with his dreadlocks, all with the gold in the individual gold ringlets there. This is all soft plastic as it normally goes with these figures, but you can definitely see how they reused a lot of very familiar City Hunter elements with the torso plate, the armor that he's wearing. But anyways, we're going to go ahead and take this, arm, this head sculpt off just one last time, showing you guys the silver paintwork that they've added to it. It's not enough that it covers all the surface, but just enough that it covers the majority of the surface with the rest of it kind of coming across more like scratches and imperfections than to the metal. 
Anyways, we're going to go ahead and pop this off. You want to be careful of the plasma caster. You could take this off completely if you really wanted to. But we're just going to remove the head, just the head sculpt like this. Just going to pop it off the ball joint. There we go. You'll also see that they use the cylinder post instead of the ball joint post, so that's good. And then just spread the hair out and then fit it over top of that and just fit it down into that socket. Now you do have to apply a fair bit of pressure. Again, a lot of... There we go. We're just going to take this off for the time being because I knew that was going to pop off on me. Just apply a little bit of pressure and there we go. You've got the alternate head sculpt. I don't think I've got it on completely. Just add a little bit of... There we go. All right. And then we can go ahead and just put the plasma caster back on. Just fit it into those grooves. I mean, it really works to our benefit that this is something that is removable and easy to remove. Because especially when it comes to changing out the head sculpts, there's nothing worse than breaking that shoulder cannon by simply just having to replace the head sculpt. And it's just a lot easier. But to give you an idea, just again, bring in the other one so you guys can see the difference between the two. Definitely a very strong argument as the way that you're going to be displaying the figure for yourself. I, normally, most Yaucha head sculpts are generally the tried and true extended out tusks. You know, they're angry, they're unhappy with life. But I do like this one quite a bit because it deviates a lot away from that. A lot of people have coined this particular predator, the, the bulldog predator. And I see, I see that. I see a little bit of that bulldog look to it. Quote sort of those teeth that stick out from the bottom lip of a bulldog. I see a little bit of that also happening with this particular predator as well. It's a very different head sculpt. And I, that's the thing that makes me, gives me that strong reasoning for why I think I'm going to display the figure like this instead. The coloring is also very different as well, because I know normally we get that cream color that you'll see around the areas of his eyebrows, the areas around his mouth as well. But then introduced to that is almost more of a human flesh tone. It's not something that you normally expect to see with predators. It's a bit jarring at first. In fact, I was jarred a bit when I first saw it because it almost comes, kind of comes across a little bit like unfinished plastic, like they didn't paint all of it. But I guess when you're looking at it, there is a unique placement to it. It's not like they just unfinished one area. There are definitely areas where it doesn't have it everywhere, that it definitely is. It's, it's specific the way that they've painted it. Um, again, I wasn't a big fan of it initially. It has grown on me uh, quite a bit. I think what works well to kind of uh, subdue, I think, a little bit of that plastic color is the fact that they've added all the additional black. You can see it the way they've done it across the crest and along the top of the crown of the head as well. Yeah, just quickly looking at that head sculpt again. One last time before we look at the rest of his body. Definitely the signature to this is these larger, these all larger fangs that almost, they almost touch right into his head for how far the reach they go. Again, the only thing that is a little jarring initially is what almost comes across like unfinished plastic. But again, I feel like there's a purpose for the way that they've painted that. Anyways, for the rest of the body, really, there's a lot of very familiar aspects to the Predator here. Uh, this coloring, by the way, the flesh tone that we looked at on the top of his head, doesn't seem to make any other appearances on the rest of his body, which I think a lot of the reasonings why, looking at it, it kind of looks like it's unpainted pieces of the figure's head sculpt. But again, you got some real stunning looking uh, painted sculpt here as well. You've got the silver on the back. I know we already looked at that already. The gauntlet on his arm. I mean, again, a lot of very familiar city hunter and jungle hunter color schemes. That cream color with the additional brown on the sides and little spots that they placed all around the arms and the torso. Of course, you've got that fishnet netting that they've got generally on these yauchas. Got a little bit of that skirting that they have. And of course, the side holster for the smart disc are all very familiar. Not much does change from this guy to maybe some of the other Predators that you have in your collection. Let's just put that back in. This gets really loose on over time. Looking at the rest of it again, not really much changes. If you look at, look at this, for example, and then you look at the Lost Predator that we just looked at not too long ago. Lost Predator makes some considerable leaps when it comes to his new design. A lot of different color that you're not used to seeing on a Predator. He is a Predator that really jumps out when you have him on a shelf. Scout Predator isn't that, and I guess he doesn't really need to be that either as well. He fits within that sort of confines of the movie Predators, at least the first two movies. Again, like that color scheme is very familiar on his armor. They don't go and rewrite the 
you know, the way that the designs of these Predators are. Like, the armor looks very familiar, very much reused from what we've seen before. The star, I think, of the show is this head sculpt right here. If you feel it's unfinished or not, it is definitely a cool-looking head sculpt. Uh, as for the figure's articulation, his head rotates back and forth. We already saw how it attaches. It attaches on that post point. So it moves up, it moves down, it rocks back and forth, and I guess you can rotate it all the way around as well. Just, again, while you're doing that, just be careful of the plasma caster. You don't want to knock that off. And even if you do knock it off, you can fit that back in the groove quite easily. For the arms, the arms hinge out. One thing you'll also notice on this particular Predator not necessarily is the shoulder pads that he's got on here, but the fact he doesn't have the connecting tube, which is always one thing that breaks on Predators if you're not careful. I'm a victim of that myself, moving the arm too quickly. That little tube connecting the two would always break off. And luckily, you won't have that problem with Scout because he doesn't even have that in the first place. But the arms move forward and back. Um, you can swivel at the bicep. And because they've kept the shoulder attached to the bicep and not to the shoulder, means that there's a lot of freedom moving it back and forth. Yeah, you're still going to be wor worrying about this at the top, but you can still very, very freely move that bicep back and forth. He has double hinges on the elbows. You can rotate the hands all the way around, whatever hand you decide to display him with. Upper torso ball joint, a little, little tighter on this figure, but upper torso ball joint. Lower torso ball joint. The legs split out. You can see there's a ball joint working underneath there. It's actually a ratcheted hinge joint. You can see the ratcheted grooves right there that they've molded into the plastic. It just adds a little bit of, just a little bit of stopping points to prevent the figure's legs from developing looseness over time. The legs move forward and back quite easily. You can rotate at the top cut of the thigh. Double hinge on the knee. Then, of course, when you get down to the feet, the feet move up. The feet move down. And you can rock them back and forth as well. I like the design of this guy. I mean, truthfully, when you've got him with the regular helmeted head sculpt, he really kind of looks like an amalgamation. Let's pick him back up here. Kind of looks like an amalgamation between the jungle hunter and the city hunter. Sort of like you splice those two designs together to get the scout. I think really what deviates this guy, and I've been using the word deviate a lot in this review, but really the one thing that separates this guy from being those traditional jungle hunter, traditional city hunter, is a brand new head sculpt that they've made for this guy, as well as this pretty cool long range blaster rifle, which most definitely will be making appearance when I'm displaying this guy on my shelf. Every so often when I'm having a look at a brand new Predator from NECA Toys, I may get this kind of question popping up in the comments section. I'm not saying it verbatim, I'm sort of just paraphrasing it, but it's usually along the lines of why are you so excited for a brand new Predator figure when it pretty much looks like one that you've already reviewed before? It's a valid point. That's a very valid point. Yes, there are many of these Predator cases where, yeah, it does look like ones that we've gotten before. You could never make that argument, I think, to a like the Alpha Predator or the Lost Predator, two that we've just recently looked at on this channel. Between their color scheme and their drastically different armor, I don't think anybody would make the argument that it looks like one that we've gotten before. But yes, admittingly, when you're looking at a character like Scout, Scout shares a lot of elements to previously looked at Predator figures on this channel. I mean, again, I said it to myself, I said it aloud, that this guy looks like a splice between Jungle Hunter and City Hunter mixed together. Most the majority of it, I would say is Jungle Hunter. It's the armor that looks a little bit more like City Hunter's design. I think in a case like this, one of the reasonings why I think I would get away from displaying him with the helmet is because he looks a lot more like Jungle Hunter. No, no, no. I think the charm with Scout is this alternate head portrait that NECA packed with the figure. It is really the thing that, as I'm going to use this word again, deviates this guy from your traditional designed Predators. Even though this has similar color scheme, yes. Even though it has similar armor, sure, it's the head sculpt that makes this guy stand out from the rest that you have in your collection. Some would say that the head looks slightly unfinished. I could possibly agree a little bit to that. It's jarring to see a flesh tone on a Predator figure and not think that it's unfinished, unpainted plastic. But again, you look at the pattern work on it, there obviously was a rhyme and a reason for why they designed and painted it the way that they did. Could they have painted the plastic a little bit of a different color? So it didn't look like it was just unfinished plastic. Sure, why not? But I do like the design of Scout Hunter quite a bit. And I think definitely when it comes to displaying Scout Predator for myself, I'm going to go the route of displaying him as the bulldog head display. And you, you got to admit, that looks like a bulldog. And definitely when it comes to displaying this guy, I'm going to be displaying him with the rifle also in his hand. Another way that, there's that word again, deviates him away from some of the others that we've looked at before. 
What do you guys think? If you've picked up the Scout Predator for yourself, let me know down below in the comment section what you guys think of it. Or based on this review, what do you guys think of the Ultimate Scout Predator? A big thank you again to the folks over at NECA Toys that provided the sample that we had a look at in this review. If you'd like to pick up the Ultimate Scout Predator for yourself and add it to your existing army of Yauchas, good news is that Scout Predator is available right now in retail stores and online as well. If you are new to the channel and liking the content you're seeing, consider the idea of hitting that subscribe button down below and turning. Yes, here we go again, talking about the bell notification. Make sure you turn on that bell notification. It is your way of telling YouTube you're interested in this guy's work. And apparently, according to the algorithm, I don't know why the way they've done it, it's set up, it's so silly. But the algorithm also has worked around a viewer interaction. And bell notification is the best way to say to YouTube that you're enjoying the content you're seeing on this guy's channel. Keeping in mind as well, Monday to Friday, 12 p.m. and 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time is when you'll find new videos. And just as an FYI, there's going to be a whole bunch of new NECA reviews lined up and coming your way. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.